Up next is Sergio. Sergio is a systems engineer, a professor of operating systems at San Carlos University of Guatemala. And Sergio is also a co-founder and cloud architect at Cloud Society. They're an online social network that joins tech communities together. He's also working on DevOps and MLOps projects and some Kubernetes training, and is also involved in the CNCF community as a community organizer, and he's promoting students into the CNCF ecosystem. He's participated in KubeCon EU 2020 and 2021, and he's also a Linkerd hero. Welcome, Sergio. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, so we have a really nice topic, uh, something that is moving right now, uh, the age computing and that thing. So we are going to talk about Argo workflows and, and Argo CD, K3S, and how to build like a small, really simple example of using K3S for age computing and this kind of powerful tools for CI CD things and workflows. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, like the presentation. Well, I am a professor. Right now, I am dressing like a bat and a t-shirt uh, of Argo. And so I teach operating systems, um, and it's uh, really, really nice. Um, so, well, I am working on Jalo um, right now. I am doing like a kind of DevOps. Um, so it's really, really nice. We lose, uh, we use a lot of Argo things, uh, Argo CD, Argo workflows. Uh, we are deploying uh, WhatsApp uh, chatbots and that kind of things. I am also an organizer of in, in Cloud Native um, here at Guatemala. Well, the the group is called Cloud Native Guatemala. I am also a linker the hero. Um, and I'm writing a book about edge computing, uh, how to use K3S. Um, to build uh, really nice and useful use cases. Uh, so let's do a quick intro to edge computing. So let's get started with this. I think that for some people, it's like something really, really new right now, uh, this topic. Uh, so let's um, summarize this information. Edge computing is more like, let's say, for example, in the regular words, you are processing information, the things on the cloud. So the point right now for edge computing is what happens if the information is processed in a device that is closer, close to the data. So for example, instead of compiling, processing the things on the cloud, you are going to process the information um, in these devices that they are that are very close to you, for example, uh, you can process information in in your smartphone, or maybe I don't know some device that is pretty close to you, like small com uh, small computer and that things. And today we are going to see how to deploy this kind of environments. You see Raspberry Pis, so it's like like the cool stuff here in the presentation. So basically that's the part, that's the point of edge computing. Process the things close to the data location in order to reduce the latency, uh, which is moving the data from one side, my local side, when I'm consuming the services, and moving that information to the cloud in order to reduce the latency when you access that information. Right now, all the things are artificial intelligence and that thing. So it's better to compile, let's say, process information locally, or maybe send data to the cloud, process the things and do the hard work on the cloud and then consume models for uh, machine learning and everything. And well, the point is distribute the work too. That's the goal of edge computing. Well, here's like, like a summary, um, as I mentioned, well, I am working in a on a book. Um, so it's like kind of extraction of some diagrams that, that I have used there. Well, each computer has like different layers. We are pretty comfortable using the cloud layer. And you can find here AWS, GCP, Azure, maybe Cibo Cloud that is using K3S. And maybe in the cloud layer could be a private cloud, uh, on-premise cloud using OpenStack or VMware. 
could be. In the near edge, that is another layer, um, you are going to find devices that are working with the LTE networks, protocols that the smartphone uses, something more related to telecommunications. Yeah. In the far edge, maybe you are going to find clusters that process information. So you are now in the far edge and the tiny edge, you are close to the origin, to the source of the data. Yeah. So maybe you can put there a Kubernetes cluster, um, maybe a small cluster using K3S, that is a pretty small Kubernetes distribution. Maybe Cube H that use K3S um, and basically create your pods, containers, and everything using Docker and not like using all the whole components of a regular Kubernetes cluster. It's pretty interesting project too, but we are going to focus more on K3S. Um, in the tiny edge, let's say that, for example, there are devices that are consuming the services from the far edge and the far edge cross to the near and goes to the cloud layer. So that are the part of the tiny edge uh, layer. Um, you are going to find this kind of devices, devices that have sensors, are collecting data, um, streaming information and everything. So that's the the part of the basic theory about that. Maybe we can visualize that in some components, cloud layer, public and private cloud, in near edge, network devices, in the far edge, maybe clusters to process information, maybe multi-node cluster, maybe single node cluster. And in the tiny edge, these devices that are going to get data or bring the service to the clients, uh, so this is a pretty basic example um, about more or less how you can implement a, um, a each computing solution. Um, we have like a cloud provider. Well, in this case, in this presentation, we are going to use GCP. You have Argo CD installed in the cloud provider. Um, we are going to have some cluster locally. Right now I am running a cluster here at my house. You are going to see that. And we have to expose this cluster and connect it to another cluster that is in the cloud. So let's say this is a, a hybrid cloud, but well, the only part missing here is like, well, I'm not consuming this information from a device, let's say my smartphone connected to my cluster and everything. Uh, but, well, we can implement uh, a client application, maybe a Android application or, or something for the iPhone that consumes the service and connect everything. So the point here is like Argo CD can be deployed in the cloud provider can manage the deployments that are running your local clusters, maybe using K3S. So Argo CD is going to manage how these things are deploying. So the goal here is to connect my local cluster that is on the edge and connect them to the cluster that is in the cloud. In this example, we are only using a Kubernetes that is designed of for low resources environments. In this case, we are going to use K3S. So Argo CD is going to manage this part of, of the workflow of, on the edge. Argo workflows in the other side maybe can help us to process information, collect information, maybe process and generate some machine learning models. Maybe we are going to share databases that are in the cloud and consume these databases or use these databases in our local cluster. Maybe we are going to use buckets from any cloud that you prefer. So that's the point to divide the different tasks that a natural solution needs to process all the information. Yeah, Argo Worldflows to process information, K3S. Uh, as our main clusters um, to deploy all our components that we need. 
we are going to explore this more in the example that we already have. Um, so let's move to Argo workflows. Well, Argo workflows, if it's the first time that you are hearing about this thing, it's like, let's say that the um, engine that gives you the ability to run pipelines about whatever you want. So you can use Argo workflows for CI CD, you can use Argo workflows to process data uh, or do ETL process and maybe to create machine learning models, whatever you want. Whenever you need to automate, you can create a pipeline with Argo workflows. The cool thing about our Argo workflows that is designed to run on Kubernetes. So it's optimized for that. There are other tools like Airflow and Luigi and that kind of things, but they are not native designed to run on Kubernetes. Argo workflows in the other side is designed to run on Kubernetes. Well, the features, as if you have some experience using these kind of tools, they run directly as graphs. Well, let's say there are pipelines, but you are showing the graph how this pipeline moves and maybe can return to previous steps. And if you draw this thing, it's going to show like uh, this direct, uh, direct uh, acyclic graph. Yep. So Argo workflows is designed to run on Kubernetes. In the other side, um, what is Argo CD? Well, Argo CD is this tool that, well, is going to manage the continuous deployment, your continuous delivery. Um, we can manage different Kubernetes objects to do this kind of continuous deployment and manage all your deployments in your clusters. So we are using Argo CD in this way to manage the deployments on the edge clusters that are using Kubernetes. Argo CD on the other side is, is really awesome because it has a different formats that you can use to work on, on your deployments. You can you have experience of customize. Customize is available to use Helm charts, KJSONet or JSONet, YAML files. And you can configure plugins and do a lot of things. They have a, a lot of options that you can explore using Argo CD has, um, has um, a CLI. Well, Argo Workflows also has a CLI. So you can use Argo Workflows and Argo CD using the CLI. And it's really fun CLI. Argo CD has an API that you can call, um, or maybe you want to use the, the CLI to get some synchronization in your deployments. And that's the way that Argo CD is going to work in that way. But um, Argo has a different kind of projects that you can use. Argo events, let's say, for example, if you want to call one pipeline or workflow in one cluster and call another pipeline that have to run in the other cluster, but this cluster is private. Maybe you want to connect, let's say, these workflows and execute them in this way, connect them using, let's say, for example, PopSub or some kind of, of Q tool like, like SQS from AWS or something. Well, Argo events, is, is the way to do these things to trigger your workflows when these events are happening. So that's the cool thing of Argo events, or maybe you want to deploy or implement canary deployments using Argo rollouts. The cool thing is like Argo rollouts could use like Linkerd for this, to do these kind of things. So it's not like just Argo CD, Argo workflows, you can even look, take a look to Argo events and Argo rollouts. K3S is our small Kubernetes distribution and is designed to run for IoT applications and edge computing. 
So the difference here is, well, IoT, you are going to connect your objects to the cloud. Well, each computing are more related to process the information near to the source of the data. So it's different. There are a lot of concepts around that. So where it's like a pretty, pretty quick introduction about this. Well, in the other way, K3S has um, some interesting features, like for example, our regular Kubernetes cluster using etcd, but you can use MySQL here. Let's say for in some experiments that I did in the past, I create um, MySQL in the cloud using Cloud SQL in, in Google Cloud and it runs so you can protect this information of your cluster and deploy this this database server in on the cloud and you can reuse this on k3s and you are protecting your the internal information of your cluster and has like let's say that the basic features of of your of a regular kubernetes cluster packaged in one single binary that let's say the size is more or less like 100 megabytes so it's slightly really, really small, but you can customize um, K3S, um, adding other backends and everything. In general, K3S is really, really lightweight and easy to use. Um, let's say an example of a command that you can use to create a cluster is pretty, pretty simple. That's the really cool part of K3S. You can send another parameters to customize the, the configuration of your cluster. And it's really, really easy to use if you want to use another tool like Ketchup that is designed for um, Alex Ellis from OpenFast. Uh, you can use Ketchup to install your K3S cluster, but the tool that K3S provides is really, really easy to use. In general, um, the use cases for edge computing could be like federated learning. That this means, like for example, you have the data distributed across different uh, regions, so, so you can process different information and put all together to generate a model, or just to distribute this processing in order to create a machine learning model. Distribute processing is more like separate they load the processing of the things and send this kind of information to different clusters and process information in order to separate and reduce the load for all the clusters and be more fair when, when you are processing this. Well, you can use edge computing for machine learning things, IoT applications, data processing, games that has a lot of data processing or any workload that you want. That's the, in general, the use cases of edge computing, but there are considerations when you are implementing these kind of solutions in this demonstration uh, that they are coming in a few minutes. Um, I compile my container to run on ERM using my Mac. Um, so you have to take that on consideration depending on your device. If you are using an ERM device, you have to compile your container for ERM. That's the tricky part of edge computing. Mm, and if you want to use like raw resource devices using ARM processors, so you have to take that in consideration. You have to install uh, additional software or replace uh, some software, for example, in K3S has like some exceptions about how Kubernetes works. Uh, let's say that you can repeat an open port using services on Kubernetes, but you can fix that. Well, not fix that because it's designed for low resources environments. So this is okay. But if you want the regular um, behavior of a Kubernetes cluster, you have to install things like uh, metal B, uh, bare metal load balancer, and maybe another ingress controller. And something important, you have to install a new storage class because the default storage class of K3S uh, doesn't work as expected. So don't expect that if you are going to install a, a program using Helm, it's going to run. Maybe it could fail because of the, of the storage class that it's using, but it's really easy to configure that part 
and maybe you have to create tunnels in order to expose your applications to the cloud and connect the different clusters that are locally and the clusters that are in the cloud. Maybe you can use inlets. There are other software like Tailgate, Kyle, and another awesome projects, or maybe a VPN to connect your clusters. Well, I mentioned this kind of tools um, that are complementary. A, st a new storage clash for DH uh, could be Longhorn, uh, bare metal load balancer, metal LB. And in the demonstration, we are using metal LB and Longhorn. Uh, maybe you you want to use another ingress controller, our Nginx. Well, Nginx has support for ARM devices. Traffic is the default ingress controller for K3S. Contour has support for ARM. Maybe you can you want to optimize your nodes and and doesn't install mm, le, well. Maybe you want to install less components than the regular K3S. So Cube H is like a really really awesome pro project that only use con, uh, Docker uh, for your nodes and everything. Is going to work. Inlets for your tunnels works really, really nice. And the benefits of this solution is like, well, this is a solution that is that has like low power consumption for your workflows, for your load. You are going to use uh, low power devices. Um, ERM devices doesn't consume too much energy compared from Intel devices. That's the cool thing about ARM, the balance between processing and energy consumption, yeah? And of course, you are going to reduce the latency between data and the user because you are processing the things or separating how you are managing the data um, in order to re reduce the latency for, for your client. So you have to design that part, what is more convenient for you. So in general, K3S plus Argo is like a match made in heaven. Works really, really nice. Let's move to the part of the demonstration. It's really awesome. Let's, this, uh, this, this is the link for the slides. If you want, take note about that. Um, the repository that I am using. Um, and well, this is the diagram for my for my demo i have a um, local cluster using k3s it's now it's near to me right now i'm going to show you the cluster i am using two nodes the node zero one node zero two um i am using k3s for my cluster yeah so one my my app one number one is running on the node zero one my app two is running my node zero two. It's pretty basic application. It's going to show just a mission message that I am running my app one, and the other is going to show I am running the my app two. But it's running on different nodes. But the cool part of this thing is that Anna, I am managing these deployments using Argo CD that is on the cloud, on GCP. And I exposing my master node that is locally right now here using inlets to connect my cluster to Argo CD. Well, Argo CD, well, in, in this way, Argo CD is going to uh, read the Cube API of my local cluster here. And it's going to use my cluster to deploy um, some configurations or applications that Argo CD uses. And I am going to do like a simple example of create a new application, commit the changes, and Argo CD is going to synchronize this thing. And this deployment is also going to include a really small Argo workflows inside running a small pipeline. It's like the basic example of the whale of Docker that is going to show some message. So it's a pretty, pretty basic example. So the workflow is, I am going to commit a change. Argo CD is going to say, well, I found a change. I am going to apply this, these changes, uh, pushing a button. You can automate this, uh, um, setting some, some options on Argo to be this automatically. But for demo purposes, I am going to do this thing manually. 
And I added this database or something. For example, if for your application, you need to access or put some data outside your the local cluster, you can use something that is on the cloud. So basically, that's my demo. So where is my K3S cluster? So let's move on the demo. My K3S cluster is here. Well, you can see the picture. It's real. I am going to pass my, my fingers there. Well, it's real. <laughs> it's a light demo. So yeah, that's my cluster and it's running. Right now, well, I have Argo CD here. Here is my applications. Maybe the screen is too small. Well, okay. So here are my applications. All the applications are running. And everything looks good. For example, let's see here. Um, the, this is a cool thing just to demonstrate that it's running on RM. This uh, says that this application is running on Linux ARM64. And the, the kernel is uh, ras raspy it will, because it's running uh, on uh, Raspberry Pis and using Ubuntu on my clusters. And well, here are my applications. Let me reduce this diagram. Well, OK. So here you are going to see how is working this thing. Basically, it deploys a service, um, well, has a deployment, creates uh, three replicas or, or for the deployment, so create three pods. It's going to create a load balancer that is here. And it's running a workflow that essentially works a pod uh, running the whale example. It's a, a really, really small whale. And um, let's see, for example, um, let me show you my, my terminal. Well, here I am running the inlets thing. Uh, well, here I'm tunneling Argo from the other cluster. Here I can show you how it looks like the workflow on uh, what's running on my local cluster here runs uh, this example that is designed to run on ARM. And for example, I can list the different workloads on, on my local cluster that is using Raspberry Pis. So for the code, uh, I can show you here the code of my container that is designed to build this for the platform ARM64. And it's something pretty basic uh, using Python and just show the message and I have another thing, the requirements and everything. And let's see, for example, the different uh, here, the, um, the application. Let's see. Says three in the port fifty is running this application. So the application one is thanks for visiting my app at ArgoCon twenty twenty one. So this is one of the applications running. Uh, my app one, uh, my app two is running on this IP that is locally, I have access um, to my cluster locally here at my house. So this is the network of my house. And let's see for the application number three. Um, okay, it's running on the, on this here. Okay. And well, here I have the cluster on Google Cloud running and the tunnel that is created. So let's create just really, really fast this application. Uh, just give me a second. Let's just duplicate this and just uh, rename these things. It's like a live demo. Um, just really, really fast. Let's put this. Uh, here and here, and I think that that's it. And let's create a terminal and push the code. Um, 
this will be really really fast um fit add um my app four and add the my my app four um git push origin master and let's apply this thing and let's wait a minute just a minute um let's apply this uh sorry i have to move here um mm -hmm. and let's apply the new application i think that everything is set to application four it's going to run on not one and let's run it it's going to apply this and now let's see the argo world the argo city is running this application right now so it's going to synchronize the thing we have to wait a little bit let's see it's going to start to to well right now is providing the application all the thing is running on arm um okay and yeah basically that's it when the deployment is well right now is running the workflow and in the in this ip is running the application number four and that's it so basically that's in general um my presentation uh all the things was running on arm um pretty pretty basic example of this and let's move to the part of questions yeah that was amazing sergio it's great to see that kind of effort real time and i'm i i've been monitoring the chat and the community is really anxious to talk to you so what i'd like to do is invite you sergio to join the chat session um, and field any of those questions that the community has been asking and um, for those of you we're going to wrap right here um, please join us in the chat here on the platform or over in the slack channel um, and we'll be on to our next session in two minutes thank you so much sergio Okay, really nice. Awesome.